everybody, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I am here with the Library 411 tag. Let's get into it. So I was tagged by Jashana from Jashana C and her as well as Stephanie from This Unicorn Reads have created, co-created the Library 411 tag in honor of April's Library Love-a-thon, I believe. There's like a big library appreciation month in April. I love my library. I'm not using it as much as I should be right now because my physical books are just way too, too many, um, but I do still use it for audiobooks. 13 questions. I think I pulled books for a lot of them. We're gonna see as I go how I did, and at the end I will tag some people that can hopefully do this, whether or not it's still April or not, because I know this is going up like mid-April, so I apologize, but I will tag some people and hopefully get some answers to some of these questions, because I really actually like them, but a lot of them stumped me, so we're gonna see how I did. First up is The Information Desk, a book that was helpful to you in any way. I have a lot of those. I actually read a lot of nonfiction. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which I did on haul. I haven't taken it to half price books yet. I also have The Success Principles, How to Get From Where You Are to Where You Wanna Be. Really liked that one. As well as The Indie Author Guide, which I still keep. This is self-publishing strategies that anybody can use. I used this and looked over this when I was um, publishing Shoot Down the Wendy Bird. So this is one that still I keep. This one still is very, very useful to me. But all of them just kind of helped me get to where I need it to be, want it to be. They were very informative. Then number two is the return bin. What are two books that you read and immediately wanted to return because you disliked them and or you DNF'd them? Nobody wants these. Like I can't give these back to the used bookstore. I don't like I don't even know if I want anybody to read them. Like I don't know what to do with them. But I hate it. The All for the Game Foxhall Court series. You guys know this. I talk about it a lot. It's one of the main contention points in my comment section. People yell at me constantly about not liking this book. But I didn't like it and you can't make me. I read all three of them. I don't know why. And then a DNF. I DNF'd the Brooding YA Hero. Twitter sensation Brooding YA Hero becoming a main character almost as awesome as me. This is like a tongue-in-cheek satirical look at YA but I really didn't like it. And I was also in the middle of like writing YA, NA, like as a writer, this was like, I, I was not in the right headspace to read that. So did not like, do not recommend. The hold section, my most anticipated release that's coming up, and it's actually one that's coming up very, very soon. And that is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. I really, really want to read that one. I did like Leah in Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda. I just really like Becky Albertalli's writing. So I definitely want to check that one out. Then number four was Community Classes and Study Rooms, a book that you loved as a school assignment. I don't have a copy of this one because it's still in storage, but it's Midsummer's Night's Dream. Um, I really like a Midsummer's Night's Dream. I actually got that like giant compilation, like huge book of William Shakespeare's work with like the Bible thin pages after reading that because I was like, I love Shakespeare. I don't love all Shakespeare. I do like some of the sonnets and I do really love A Midsummer's Night's Dream. I actually had to use one of the sonnets for an oral presentation in my public speaking class when I was in high school and I really enjoyed both of those. Also because fairies, like mischievous fae in any book is going to be a win for me. Also Where the Red Fern Grows. Holy crap. That book broke my heart and I love it. I actually love the movie version of it too. Um, there's been a couple different remakes. One of them with Dave Matthews in it, who I happen to love. So like I enjoyed that one, but Where the Red Fern Grows also just killed me. Then we have Computers, a modern classic you love or your favorite sci-fi. I have an answer for both of these because I truly believe that The Hate You Give will be a modern classic. Um, I think that this is one that's going to stand the test of time. I think this is one that should be taught in schools and I just think that this is a modern brilliant piece of work. I really really loved it. So Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give is my modern classic pick. And then for my sci-fi, like the only sci-fi series that I really read is The Illuminae Files. This is the first one, Illuminae, and then I have the last one, Obsidio. I don't own Gemini yet, but I love this. Plus the category or the question for this was computers and Aiden, who's the AI in this, is like my favorite AI of all times, aside from Lovey, Long Way to a Small Night on Your Planet, which also would be a favorite sci-fi. Ooh, Long Way to a Small Night on Your Planet by Becky Chambers too. So both of them. 
because holy crap, they're both really, really good. And then DVD rentals, your most anticipated or favorite in recent history book to movie or book to TV adaptation or a book that felt cinematic or a book that you wish would be adapted. <laughs> That's a lot of ors, guys. I'm going to pick a recent read that I fell in love with, and that is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. Can you see all these lovely tabs? This got optioned by Netflix. Netflix won the bidding war for this one. I don't know, as of filming this, whether or not it's going to be a TV series, a mini series, a made-for-TV movie. Like, I don't know how they're adapting this. This was very, very atmospheric. The setting of this was so rich and vibrant and real that it felt very cinematic while I was reading it. And then knowing that it had been optioned, I actually knew it was optioned before I started reading it. So I knew it was going to be adapted before I started the read. And then once I finished it, I was even more excited for it because I think that they can do a lot with this. And I'm really hoping they do it well because it has the potential to be done poorly, but I'm really hoping that they do it well. Um, and I think they will. I have high hopes because Netflix is doing really good shows lately. This one for sure, because this was like my favorite read of the month so far. And I'm really, really hoping that they do it justice in the remake. So this, I'm holding my breath, nervously awaiting that one. Library, bookstore, or sale, a random book that you picked up without knowing anything about it and really enjoyed. Also, or show off your favorite bookish merch. So two things. I have a ton of candles that I have acquired recently, as well as a ton of bookmarks that I've acquired recently. I will have an individual video coming up soon on my bookmark collection, as well as my candle collection, as well as links to all the Etsy shops that I have found that I really, really love. So those will be coming soon. So I will show off my bookish merch there. But the book that I picked up without knowing anything about and actually ended up loving is one that came to me in an Owlcrate. And I think this was actually my first Owlcrate book that I got, like my first Owlcrate box. And it's The Serpent King by Jeff Sentner. You guys know I love this book. I picked it up not knowing anything about it, not really being interested in the synopsis of it at all. And it quickly became like one of my favorite reads and one of my favorite authors. I really, really liked this book. I connected with it in a way that I was not expecting to and fell in love with the characters and the setting in a way that also was not expecting to, like small southern, really religious town, like a lot of religious overtones in this book, and I still really, really loved it, and that's not my vibe. Then we have teen or youth room, favorite YA or favorite book that you read as a kid, or a book you can't wait to share with your future kids, nieces, nephews. I'm not gonna pull Six of Crows, because it's up there, but Six of Crows was my favorite like YA that I read. I read it at the very, very beginning of BookTube, and it made me fall back in love with high fantasy and that like YA fantasy genre so hard. It's so good. As far as my favorite when I was a kid and a classic that I love, it is always going to be The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgkins Burnett. I happen to love this edition. I reread this recently, um, and it is one of the few classics that I really really love. I just think it's a beautiful story and it's definitely one that I think I would like my nieces to read. And then one that I'm very invested in making sure my nieces and nephews love is The Labyrinth. And this one is a retelling uh, from the movie by A.C.H. Smith and illustrations are by Brian Froud. A ton of you are tagging me because The Labyrinth is being re-released in theaters coming up soon. They do that every year for the most part I've noticed and I have taken it my niece to go and see it in the theaters and I love it. And I've gone back and seen it in the theaters and it just makes me so happy. So um, I think the two of these are ones that I definitely want to make sure that they love. Museum Tickets is a book that made you feel a little bit more cultured upon completing it. There's a couple of those books for me personally. They're like the books, they're also in storage right now, but they're the books that you read and you kind of keep on your shelf to be like, I read that book. Aren't you impressed that I read that book? For me, it would be Les Mis because that is a big ass book, but I have read Les Mis and I loved it. Another one would probably be Pillars of the Earth by Ken Foley because it's just, or Follett, I don't know. I say Foley because it feels like it should be French, but I don't know what it really is. About the building of a cathedral, like it should not be something I love. I really loved it. So that one kind of made me feel schmancy about myself. The Poisonwood Bible made me feel very cultured because it's about missionaries that go to Africa and again like religious overtones that don't interest me but like the book was beautifully written and I actually really liked it and it made me feel like super fancy and then number 10 is Overdriver Hoopla an audiobook that you love and for me that will always be the Diviner series the Diviner series audiobooks are done so well 
really, really liked the audiobooks for those. I also liked the audiobook version of Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner's Starbound trilogy. I'll put the covers here. They were really cool. I thought they were really well done. They weren't like the best books, but the audiobooks were done really, really well. Eleven is Request a Purchase, and this is a lesser known book that you want more people to know about and read. I have requested so many purchases. My library system does not get like anything in. I request so much and then put myself like to immediately be on the wait list for it. I'm gonna talk about this one. This is This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills, which is also another one I picked up not knowing anything about it. I picked it up because the cover is gorgeous. Fell in love with the story. This is one of my favorite contemporaries. I usually go for like really dark and twisty contemporaries that like rip your heart out. This doesn't do that, but it was so good. I loved it so much. So this is one that I've seen a lot of you actually go ahead and pick up and talk about and you've tagged me in reviews and tweeted me your reviews after reading it and I've been loving the messages that I've been getting about this book. So Sloane moves into town and kind of in, not inserts herself but is welcomed into this group of friends that's already established and she's trying to learn basically everything about these people. She doesn't know their backstory, she doesn't know their relationships to one another and she's just trying to find her way in this new town. She becomes really close friends with this already tight-knit group of friends just tries to kind of prove how much she cares about them by doing different things. Her father in this is hilarious. He's an out-of-work writer who's trying to get back into writing by watching and reading fanfic and then starts to get into like the fanfic writing world to try to get himself back into writing. The family dynamic in this was great. The friend dynamic in this was fantastic. It was diverse. It was amazing. I loved it. Definitely give it a read. Also, I'm going to shout out Toil and Trouble, which does not come out yet, but I just read the arc of and tabbed the heck up. This is such a powerful, powerful set of short stories. This one comes out on August 28th, so you guys have a little bit of a wait, but if you can request the arc on NetGalley or if you can get your hands on it, I think you're going to really, really love it. This was the most amazing combination of feminist writing, of queer and diverse writing, and also witchy tales. Like all of these have elements of magic and witches in them, but in very different ways sometimes. Like not all of them are your classic spell and broom witches. They're all very different, but they're all very beautiful. And I ended up really loving this collection. I have a breakdown review on Goodreads of all of these stories individually. Some of these will stay with me forever like forever. I know I will reread this. I will probably reread this again in October, but the overarching message of this is very like female empowered and feminist and embracing your magic and what makes you different, embracing your sexuality and not silencing your voice. It is just, it's gorgeous. Like it's a diverse, complex short story collection that is so beautifully crafted. Like it's put together so so well. So when this comes out, I need you to read it. And if you can get an arc of this anyway, anyhow, do it because it's so, so worth it. Number 12 is Librarians, a character who loved helping others. I didn't pull something for this. Crap. I can say Jenks from the Hollow series. I'll put him up here by Kim Harrison. You guys know it's not a video unless I talk about the Hollow series. I love the Hollow series. Witches and vampires and fairies and demons and were animals. Super diverse. There is an Asian bisexual vampire roommate. It's adult urban fantasy. So, so neat. And Jenks is like the third party sidekick, but he's very, very helpful and I love him. Also, Biz. Biz is their gargoyle and Biz is freaking adorable. Biz is one of the most helpful creatures in the whole entire world. Gargoyles help you like jump and navigate ley lines to like move in between the demon realm and their realm and also like space and time in their realm. And he's just a little baby gargoyle. So like he can't help them jump too far, but he wants to and he's a adorable, like legitimately adorable. So Biz and Jenks, oh, I love that answer. And then the 13th and final question is Sanctuary. And this is a book that was your safety net, felt like home to you or helped you through a rough time. I'm going to do something that I never, ever, ever, ever do, but I'm going to talk about my own book. Shoot Down the Wendy Bird, a collection of flash fiction and poetry. This is my book. And the reason that this is my safety net and my lifeline and helped me through a hard time is that I wrote these short stories in a very depressed state in a time where I needed writing to help me through hard times and to help me through depression. And writing has always been an outlet for me in those worst times. This collection definitely speaks to a lot of that. 
Um, this helped me work through a lot of anxiety and just negative feelings. It helped me work through things that I couldn't figure out on my own. Like I was able to rewrite things in a way that made me feel like I had control. So this is very, very powerful for me in that way. Also, this was written and put together and published at a point in my life where I had spent three plus years on an online magazine, on being a business owner, which I never thought I was going to be, on pushing myself constantly, daily, outside of my comfort zone, on writing three or four articles a week that had to be structured and researched and kind of clinical. And I was feeling so drained from a creative standpoint that I would take five, ten minutes and write a short story or a flash fiction or a poem and that would be my creative way to like stay connected to my writing. Gave me back a creative freedom to write whatever I wanted instead of writing what people would want to read. As I struggle with self-doubt, as I'm working on editing this novel and going through my first full-length novel and starting my second full-length novel, this one continues to be that safe home for me. I had somebody uh, Donald, actually, from Donald Loves Literature here on YouTube. I will link him down below. He actually petitioned his teachers and his school to get this put into his school library and sent me the picture of this book with, like, the library ISBN number on it so that it could be checked out so that him and his friends and his teachers could all read my book. And I... It was the same night that I finished my second draft of, of edits on my novel was the day that he sent that to me. And I was like winding down from the emotional overload of finishing that draft of, of edits, wondering if I had done enough and if it was good enough and how much I was gonna have to do for the next round of edits to make it like palatable. And I was really nervous and feeling bad. And then he sent that. And so this continues to be something that like on bad days, when you guys tell me that you've read this and love this, continues to be something that lifts my spirits and that lifeline to being like, I can do this. I know I can do this because I know this is good and I know this has my heart in it and that this is such like a personal collection for me. Um, and then to see so many people relate to it and love it. Yeah, this for sure. And I'm not going to feel bad about it because you're allowed to love your own stuff. You just are. So that is all 13 of the questions. I love my library. Go support your local library. They're amazing. They really, really are. I am going to tag Natasha from My Reading is Odd. I'm going to tag The Book Roast. I'm going to tag Chelsea from Chelsea Palmer, Amber's Books and More, and Red Door Reader. I will tag Abel from A Young Adult Author Show. And I will tag Jay from JJ. Yeah, I hope if you're tagged, you will do it. If you're not tagged, I tag you. That's been it for this video. If you've liked it, give it a big thumbs up, click subscribe, click the little notification bell, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.